Lucille and Gary grew up in a charming small town where the cobblestone streets echoed the hurried footsteps of residents going about their daily business. Children of working-class families, they both learned early the value of hard work and simplicity. From childhood, they found in each other a genuine friendship, sharing games and moments of confidences. Remember when we tried to build that soapbox car? Gary asked, laughing as they reminisced about their youthful adventures. How could I forget? You were always the engineer, and I the brave test pilot, Lucille replied, with a gleam of nostalgia in her eyes. As the years passed, what began as childish camaraderie blossomed into a deeper affection. On cool summer evenings, they would meet at the old bridge over the river that cut through the town, a place they considered their secret refuge. Sitting there, they shared dreams and plans for the future. One day I'm going to be rich and you'll travel the world with me, Gary said, staring at the stars. Lucille smiled, responding softly. I would love that. This evolution of their relationship was as natural as the seasons. Over time, they realized that love had rooted itself in their lives as deeply as their roots in that land of cobblestones and promises. It was a love built on the solid foundation of years of trust and companionship, a living testament to the beauty of growing up and falling in love in the place they called home. Although Lucille and Gary cherished the dream of pursuing university studies, the financial demands of their families led them down a different path. They found work in a grand mansion in the neighboring town, a vast and elegant structure surrounded by meticulously maintained gardens and adorned with a sparkling fountain at the main entrance. Lucille took the position of a cleaner. Wearing her simple uniform, she walked the long corridors and decorated rooms where each piece of furniture and carpet told a story of opulence. While cleaning, she daydreamed, imagining herself in a classroom, absorbing knowledge that would transform her into a teacher or lawyer. One day this will just be a distant memory, Gary. I'll be teaching, helping other people reach their dreams just like I reached mine," she confided during their brief breaks. Gary, meanwhile, dressed in the elegance reserved for drivers of high society, was responsible for driving a car as shiny as the eyes of the mansion's owners. You know, Lucille, every day here makes me more determined, he said, his voice laden with unbreakable hope. Both knew that each day of hard work was a step towards realizing their dreams. Amid the sparkle of crystals and the hum of engines, they kept the flame of a better future alive, supporting each other on the journey they shared, strengthened by love and the determination to never let their aspirations dim in the face of challenges. As the years unfolded, Lucille and Gary, united by their shared dreams and efforts, managed to save enough to take a new step in their lives. With every penny saved from working at the mansion, they finally managed to buy a small house in a quiet neighborhood, a true home that symbolized their struggle and determination. It was a modest house, with a small garden in front and a porch that caught the afternoon sun, perfect for the deep conversations they so cherished. Look at our house, Gary. We made it against all odds, Lucille said, her eyes shining with tears of happiness as she held the trembling keys in her hands. They decided to seal their union with a wedding ceremony that reflected their journey together. Simple, yet deeply moving. The celebration took place in the backyard of their new home, decorated with wildflowers and twinkling lights hanging from the trees. Friends and family gathered, forming a joyful small crowd, each face a reflection of the love and support they had received over the years. You have always been my strength, Gary. Together we are invincible. Lucille spoke with a choked voice during the exchange of vows, their hands tightly held. He, with a smile that lit up his entire face, replied, And you, my dear Lucille, are my heart. Together, we will build everything we've dreamed of. The celebration was filled with laughter, dancing, and shared stories, each moment etching itself in everyone's memory as a testament to what can be achieved with love and perseverance. The night ended under a starry sky, as the newlyweds dreamed of the many happy chapters yet to write in their lives. Married life, naturally, was not without its challenges for Lucille and Gary. Adjusting to the daily routine, balancing the budget with their aspirations, and dealing with the small disagreements that arose between a couple who shared so much of their lives required patience and understanding. However, these same difficulties proved fundamental in strengthening their bond even further, 
turning each obstacle into an opportunity to grow together. In the midst of everyday demands, Lucille found moments of escape in her daydreams about the future. While polishing the imposing chandeliers or arranging the heavy curtains of the mansion where she still worked, she imagined the laughter of a child echoing through the corridors of her own home. Gary, do you think he will have your eyes? She asked during dinner, a smile playing on her lips as they discussed names for a future child. I hope so, but with your smile, Lucille, it will brighten our days, Gary replied, his heart warmed by the idea of starting a family with the woman he loved. These conversations became a ritual for the couple, a way to dream together and keep hope and joy alive in their lives. They envisioned teaching their child to ride a bike around the neighborhood, weekend trips to the park, and bedtime story nights, each thought reinforcing their mutual love and dedication. Amid the challenges and shared dreams, Lucille and Gary continued to weave the tapestry of their life together, each thread representing the struggles and joys of their joint journey strengthening the bonds that united them with the promise of a radiant future ahead. The discovery of Lucille's pregnancy filled their home with joy and a palpable sense of anticipation. Both hearts beat in unison with the excitement of welcoming a new member to the family. Lucille, radiant with the new phase of life, ran her hands over her growing belly, feeling each subtle movement of the baby as a whisper of future promises. Gary, turning his anxiety into action, dedicated himself to preparing everything that would be needed for the baby's arrival. Nights and weekends were spent assembling the crib, painting the baby's room, and ensuring that every detail was perfect. I want our child to have the best possible start in life, Lucille, he said, while carefully smoothing the fresh paint on the room's walls. Everything needs to be ready and perfect. Among the preparations, Gary also researched fatherhood, reading books and articles, and often shared his findings with Lucille. Did you know that talking to the baby still in the womb can strengthen our bond with him? He commented excitedly as he lay next to Lucille at night, murmuring sweet words to the belly that housed their future child. Lucille, in turn, delighted in the preparations in Gary's care, finding in him an unwavering support. You're going to be a wonderful father, Gary, she replied love overflowing in her gaze. Together they wove dreams for their child, imagining him running through the garden or reading stories under the trees in the backyard, each plan another brick in the foundation of the loving home they were building. The early arrival of little Michael took Lucille and Gary by surprise, transforming a moment of expected joy into a situation filled with anxiety and fear. The premature birth brought unforeseen complications, the baby was born with serious health issues that had not been detected in prenatal screenings. In the hospital, as doctors moved quickly around Michael trying to stabilize him, Lucille and Gary felt powerless, watching from a distance, overwhelmed by a whirlwind of emotions. Why did this have to happen? We did everything right, Lucille murmured between sobs, her hands trembling as she held Gary's. He, equally shaken but trying to remain strong for both, replied with a choked voice, We'll get through this, Lucille. No matter what happens, we're in this together. After stabilizing Michael, the doctors called Lucille and Gary in for a crucial meeting. In the small office overlooking the hospital corridor, the atmosphere was tense, and the doctors' expressions, though compassionate, foretold challenging news. Michael is stable now, but he will face significant challenges without extensive medical interventions, explained the pediatrician, flipping through the baby's medical file. Lucille asked with a trembling voice, What exactly does he need, doctor? The doctor, choosing his words carefully, detailed a list of specialized treatments, including therapies and possible surgeries, which were essential to improve Michael's conditions and offer him a chance at a more normal growth. Gary, with a furrowed brow and worry, asked about the insurance coverage. Does our health insurance cover these treatments? The doctor shook his head, a look of regret in his eyes. Unfortunately, most of these procedures are not covered. The costs can be quite high. Lucille felt a tightening in her heart, and tears began to form in her eyes as the reality of their financial situation hit them hard. But how are we going to do this? We, we don't have that kind of money, she blurted out, her voice breaking with emotion. Gary, trying to maintain composure for both, 
responded with determination, despite the evident pain in his gaze. We'll find a way, Lucille. We'll do whatever it takes for our son. Maybe we can find some assistance program or, or start a fundraising campaign. We're not giving up now. Faced with overwhelming financial demands and a lack of health insurance coverage, Lucille and Gary found themselves trapped in a distressing dilemma about how to ensure the best for Michael's future. Sitting together in the small kitchen of their home, with bills and budgets spread across the table, the couple faced the reality of their financial limitations. Gary ran his hands through his hair in a sign of frustration, feeling the weight of each decision. Lucille, I don't know how we're going to do this. The treatments are too expensive and we can't just wait for a financial miracle, he said, his voice laden with concern. Lucille, with tear-filled eyes but a steely determination, responded, We can't give up on our son, Gary. Maybe there's another option, some resource we haven't considered yet. Gary nodded. Let's explore every possibility. Someone has to be able to help us. This grim yet necessary dialogue marked the beginning of a challenging journey for the couple. They were determined to overcome financial barriers to ensure that Michael received the care he needed, even if it meant seeking help far beyond their own capabilities. United by their love for their son, Lucille and Gary prepared to face whatever came their way, armed with hope and the solidarity of those around them. However, as the days passed, the reality of ongoing care and mounting medical expenses for Michael began to overwhelm Lucille and Gary, challenging their ability to maintain emotional and financial balance. On a particularly difficult afternoon, after receiving yet another batch of hospital bills, the couple sat down in the living room, a heavy silence hanging in the air. Gary, looking at Lucille, sighed deeply. Each day seems to bring new bills. I don't know how much longer we can handle this without compromising other essential needs, he confessed, weariness marking his features. Lucille, trying to maintain a facade of optimism, attempted to comfort Gary. We will find a way as we always have. Maybe we can reorganize our budget, cut some non-essential expenses. We need to keep hope, she said, her voice trembling slightly with tension. And what if it's not enough? Gary questioned, the fear of not being able to provide for his son becoming more palpable. What else can we do, Lucille? I don't want our son to suffer because of something that's beyond our control. Lucille, deeply moved by the situation but still resilient, replied with determination, Then we'll seek more help. We're not in this alone, Gary. We can talk to our friends, family, and even strangers who might want to help. We have to try everything. However, after weeks of relentless struggle against mounting medical debts and emotional exhaustion, Lucille and Gary faced the most difficult decision of their lives. On a quiet night, after Michael had been hospitalized again due to complications, the couple sat in the kitchen, the weight of the world reflected in their tired gazes. Gary broke the silence, his voice hoarse with concern. Lucille, we've tried everything we could, but, but I fear it might not be enough. Michael needs more than we can give. His words were heavy, laden with a sense of failure. Lucille, with tears in her eyes, slowly shook her head, the decision already painfully forming in her heart. I know, Gary, and I hate to think about it, but maybe... Maybe the best chance for Michael is in a place that can provide what we can't. Her voice trembled, but her determination to do the best for her son was clear. Gary clasped Lucille's hands, seeking strength in their connection. You're thinking about an orphanage, aren't you? He asked, the idea bitter in his mouth. A place that can guarantee his treatments and give him the stability he deserves. Lucille nodded, a tear rolling down her cheek. Yes, it's a terrible choice. But he would have access to better medical care, to specialists. He might have a better life, Gary. She sighed deeply, her heart breaking with the reality of their decision. With the decision made, Though their hearts were broken, Lucille and Gary sought out a renowned orphanage known for its care and medical resources. They explained the situation, ensuring that Michael would receive the best care possible. As they left Michael in the arms of capable caretakers, they felt an excruciating mix of relief and pain, believing they were giving him a better chance at life, even if it meant removing him from the warmth of their home. Michael spent his early years in the orphanage, a place that, while it could never replace the warmth of a family home, provided constant care and attention. 
The staff at the orphanage quickly grew fond of little Michael, whose sweetness and easy smile won everyone over, despite his frequent trips to the hospital to treat his delicate condition. Each nurse and caregiver at the orphanage knew of Michael's health challenges, but they also recognized his incredible resilience. This boy has amazing strength, one nurse commented as she watched him play with other children in the courtyard, despite having returned from the hospital recently. He goes through so much but always keeps that smile. Michael, though young, showed a maturity and understanding beyond his years. He knew his life was different from other children, but found joy in the little things. A new storybook, games with friends, or the garden where he liked to spend time. When I grow up, I want to help people like me, he would sometimes say to the staff who listened with admiration and affection. Michael's kindness and his determination to face life's challenges with a smile never failed to impress everyone who knew him. He was a bright presence in the orphanage, inspiring both the staff and other children with his bravery and optimism. As he grew, he learned to manage his own adversities and to comfort and encourage his friends, becoming a beloved and respected figure in the institution. When Michael turned seven, a transformative event occurred, marking a new chapter in his life. During a visit by potential adopters to the orphanage, Susan and Albert, a prosperous couple who had long wished for children, met Michael. They were immediately touched by his energy and unbreakable spirit, who despite his frequent hospitalizations, radiated joy and courage. Look how lively he is, even playing by himself, Susan commented to Albert as they watched Michael on the orphanage playground, his contagious laughter filling the air. Albert, observing the boy's interaction with others, his gentle and encouraging manner with the younger children, felt an instant connection. He's special, Susan. You can see the strength and kindness in his eyes, he replied, the idea of adopting Michael already forming in his mind. After the visit, the couple discussed at length the possibility of adopting Michael. Susan expressed her feelings. Michael has something that deeply touches me. He has faced so much, yet he is still able to smile and make others smile. He deserves a family that loves and supports him. Albert agreed, fully convinced of the decision. Let's do this, Susan. Let's offer him the home and love he so deserves. Who knows how many more mountains he can climb with a bit of support. With that decision, Susan and Albert began the adoption process, driven by admiration, resilience, and the vibrant spirit of Michael. After weeks of evaluations and preparations, they received the news that the adoption had been approved. With hearts full of anticipation and love, they prepared Michael's room in their home, eager to welcome the boy they had already begun to consider as their son. After the adoption was finalized, Michael moved to Susan and Albert's house, starting a new chapter filled with love and security. The couple had carefully prepared for his arrival, transforming one of the rooms into a cozy haven with walls painted in a soft blue and shelves filled with books and toys. On his first day in his new home, Michael explored every corner with a mix of curiosity and enthusiasm. Susan, following closely behind, said with a smile, This is your room, Michael. We hope you feel happy and safe here. Michael, looking around, his eyes lighting up at the sight of the toys and books, responded with a shy but hopeful voice, It's the most beautiful place I've ever seen. Albert and Susan were fully committed to providing a safe environment and all the medical and emotional support Michael needed. They met with Michael's doctors to fully understand his health needs and ensure he continued to receive proper treatments and care. Albert, while organizing Michael's medical documents, reaffirmed their commitment saying, we will ensure you receive the best care possible, Michael. We want you to grow up strong and healthy. Beyond physical support, Susan and Albert made it a point to be emotionally present for Michael, offering him an environment of unconditional love. Family movie nights, outings, and bedtime reading sessions became regular routines, strengthening the bond between them. You are part of our family now, and we will always be here for you, Susan often assured Michael, who, with each passing day, felt more at home and loved by his new parents. In school, Michael quickly stood out for his intelligence and for his sensitivity and empathy towards others. As he progressed in his studies, he was drawn to the sciences, particularly medicine. Biology classes, where he learned about the human body and its complexities, fascinated him, 
awakening a deep curiosity and a fervent desire to understand how to alleviate people's suffering. One day, while discussing his growing interest in medicine with Susan and Albert in the kitchen, Michael shared his motivations. I know what it's like to be sick and scared. I want to help people who are going through that. I want to make a difference in their lives, he explained with a maturity surprising for his age. Susan, with a smile of pride, responded, Michael, your compassion is really special. If this is your passion, we'll support you every step of the way. Encouraged by his parents, Michael began to dedicate even more time to studying health sciences, participating in school clubs related to medicine, and volunteering at local hospitals. Albert, observing Michael's enthusiasm, frequently encouraged him. Every experience you gather is preparing you to be a great doctor, Michael. We're so proud of the man you are becoming. This passion for medicine and the desire to positively contribute to society defined Michael's path during his school years, shaping his aspirations and reinforcing his commitment to turn personal adversities into a drive to help others. With the constant support of Susan and Albert, Michael continued to grow both academically and personally, always aiming to alleviate the suffering of others at heart. After graduating from high school with distinction, Michael was on the threshold of a new stage in his life. With the unconditional support of Susan and Albert, he decided to follow his dream of attending college and becoming a doctor. Susan, always the encourager, warmly smiled and said, Michael, we've always known you have a special purpose in this world. Your ability to empathize and your desire to heal are true gifts. We'll support you every step of this journey. Albert added with a touch of pride in his voice. And it's not just about helping others, Michael, but also about proving to yourself how far you can go. You have immense value, and your journey up to this point is proof of that. Inspired by the words of encouragement and the love he felt from his parents, Michael dedicated himself to the application processes and preparation for admission exams. He spent long hours studying, often discussing medical subjects and problems with Susan and Albert, who were always ready to listen and assist whenever needed. This phase of preparation was not just about getting into medical school. For Michael, it was a way to consolidate his identity and his life goals. He was motivated by the desire to help those who suffer and by the desire to honor the love and investment Susan and Albert had made in his life. Years after his graduation, Dr. Michael had established himself as a respected and dedicated physician at a renowned hospital. His empathetic approach and commitment to his patients were well known among his colleagues and admired by all who worked with him. On a particularly busy morning, as he reviewed medical records and prepared for the daily rounds, a new admission caught his attention. It was a middle-aged man, severely ill who had been brought to the hospital by his wife. Preparing to enter the patient's room, Michael reviewed the case notes on his tablet. He sighed, feeling the weight of responsibility. Each patient was a reminder of why he had chosen this career. Upon entering the room, Michael found the man lying in bed, his expression tired, but his eyes alert. The wife, a woman with gentle and concerned features, stood up immediately. Doctor, please do anything you can for him, she said urgently, her voice trembling. Michael smiled reassuringly and assured, I'm here to help. We'll do everything within our power. He approached the patient, examining him carefully, while asking questions to better understand the symptoms and medical history. What Michael did not know was that this encounter was about to reveal more than he expected. As Michael adjusted the monitoring equipment beside the bed, the patient's wife began to share more about her husband's condition. He started getting sick shortly after we made the hardest decision of our lives, she confided, her eyes brimming with tears. We had to send our son to an orphanage. It wasn't an easy choice, and since then his health has only deteriorated. Michael, hearing the mention of the orphanage, felt a subtle tug at his heart an instinctive and unexpected connection that sharpened his attention. He looked at the woman, his professional demeanor mixed with personal curiosity. That must have been extremely difficult for you. I'm sorry you had to go through that, he said, his voice soft and full of empathy. Yes, it was devastating. We always wonder about our son, whether he's okay, whether it was the right decision, she continued, venting to Michael. The intensity of Lucille's emotional connection to the event made Michael feel even more compelled to learn more, to understand not just as a doctor, but also on a more personal level. I can imagine that leaves a mark, Michael responded, 
encouraging her to continue. The woman, feeling an odd trust in the young doctor, opened up further, describing the ongoing struggle to accept the decision and the repercussions it had on their lives. This conversation not only impacted Michael professionally, but he began to suspect a deeper connection between the patient's story and his own life. As the conversation continued, additional details began to emerge, leading Michael to realize that the couple was none other than Lucille and Gary, his biological parents. Lucille, her voice choked with emotion, revealed more about the circumstances surrounding their lives. Ever since we made the difficult decision to send our son to the orphanage, our lives have never been the same, she explained, looking towards Gary, who lay pale and weak in the bed. She continued, her words laden with regret. Gary never truly recovered from that choice. He started getting sick shortly after, and his health has only deteriorated. It seems the weight of regret and worry contributed to his current condition. Michael listened intently, each word from Lucille resonating within him. He always says he feels like he left a part of himself at that orphanage, along with our son. We both feel it, actually, Lucille added, tears now freely running down her cheeks. As Michael absorbed this revelation, the reality that the patients before him were, in fact, his own biological parents, began to crystallize. The emotional impact of this discovery began to take shape as he processed the information that their lives had been intertwined by sadness and loss since the decision that changed their destiny so many years ago. Michael felt a turmoil of emotions flooding his heart. The discovery deeply shook his beliefs and confronted him with feelings of resentment and compassion that vied for space within him. Even though he was shaken, Michael maintained a professional demeanor, concealing the emotional turmoil that overwhelmed him. As he continued attending to Gary, he pondered internally about what to do with this information. I... I don't know if I can just reveal who I am. They handed me over to the orphanage. How can I face this now when they need me? Michael reflected silently, questioning whether he had the capacity to forgive the actions that had so dramatically shaped his life. As he adjusted Gary's IV, Michael decided to keep his identity secret, at least for now. Now is not the time for emotional upheavals. They need care, and I must maintain my professional commitment, he thought, feeling the weight of each decision. Michael left the room to fetch more supplies, using this moment to take a deep breath and compose himself. As he walked through the hospital corridors, he murmured to himself, I need time. I need to understand all this before I can face the truth with them. This decision to hide his identity while grappling with his conflicting feelings marked a moment of deep personal reflection for Michael, who needed to evaluate not only his capacity to forgive, but also the impact that the truth would have on all of them. After his shift at the hospital, Michael drove to his parents' house, feeling an urgent need to share his discoveries and seek advice. Arriving there, he found Albert and Susan in the living room, reading quietly. The serene atmosphere contrasted sharply with the storm of emotions he carried. Can I talk to you both for a moment? It's important, Michael began, his voice a bit more tense than usual. Albert and Susan immediately marked their pages and turned their full attention to him, sensing the seriousness in his expression. Sitting down with them, Michael took a moment to organize his thoughts before revealing what he had discovered. Today at the hospital, I treated a couple and, well, I found out they are my biological parents. They don't know who I am, he confessed, the weight of the words filling the space. Susan reached for his hand, offering a comforting squeeze. Oh, son, that must have been a shock for you. How are you feeling about it? She asked, concern evident in her eyes. Michael sighed, a mix of confusion and anguish crossing his expression. I... I really don't know. I'm trying to process everything. Part of me wants to confront them, ask why, but another part is afraid of what that truth might cause. Albert then spoke with an expression of affection and concern. Son, carrying resentment in your heart can be a very heavy burden, Albert began, his voice calm and thoughtful. Resentment can cloud the good moments and affect all parts of your life. It's not healthy to keep it inside. Susan, always empathetic and wise, added, Forgiving doesn't mean forgetting what happened, but it can free you from the pain it causes you. 
Perhaps it's time to look within yourself and consider forgiveness as a path to inner peace. Michael listened, absorbing each word. He knew they were right, but the idea of forgiving felt as complex as it was painful. I understand what you're saying, and part of me wants to follow that path. But how do I start? How can I forgive something that so drastically changed the course of my life? Susan moved closer to Michael. Start slowly, she suggested gently. Maybe try to understand their circumstances at the time. Talking more about it might help. And remember, we're here to support you no matter what you decide. Forgiveness is a process, son, not a single event. Give yourself the time and space to feel everything you need to feel. When you're ready, you'll know. Albert concluded, offering an encouraging smile. After the reflective conversation with Albert and Susan, Michael felt more prepared to face the past that had tormented him until then. He spent several sleepless nights pondering the words of his adoptive parents until he finally felt ready to take concrete action. The next day, with firm resolve, Michael drove to the hospital where he worked. With slightly trembling hands but clear determination, he accessed the system to obtain Gary's home address. It's time to face this head on, he murmured to himself as he copied the details. Driving to Lucille and Gary's house, Michael felt a whirlwind of emotions. With each kilometer he approached, his heart beat a little faster. Upon arrival, he parked the car and spent a few moments collecting his thoughts, taking deep breaths to calm his nerves. You can do this, he encouraged himself, looking at the modest house in front of him. Michael got out of the car and walked to the front door. Each step seemed to echo with the weight of his decisions and the possibilities of what was to come. Standing in front of the door, he took another deep breath, feeling the light breeze touch his face like a whisper of encouragement. Raising his hand, he knocked on the door, ready to face whatever was on the other side, armed with a new understanding of forgiveness and the search for answers. When Gary opened the door, he wasn't expecting to see Michael. The look of surprise was evident on his features. Doctor, can I help you? Gary asked, his voice carrying a gentle caution. Michael, maintaining his composure despite the emotions bubbling inside, responded with a slight nod. Good afternoon, I... I really need to talk to both of you, it's very important. With a still puzzled expression but sensing the gravity of the request, Gary stepped aside, inviting Michael in. Of course, come in. Lucille is here too. We can talk in the living room, he said, guiding Michael into the house. As they entered the living room, Lucille looked up at Michael, confused about his presence there. She stood up from the sofa, her expression mixing curiosity and concern. Hello, how can we help you? She asked. Michael looked at both of them and felt a wave of emotions wash over him. He took a deep breath, gathering the courage needed to say what he had rehearsed countless times in his mind. I... I am Michael, the son you, that you placed in the orphanage. I came here because, because I needed to see you, to understand everything that happened, Michael continued, his own voice trembling with the emotional weight of the words. Tears began to run freely down his face as he spoke, marking the moment of an intense and cathartic revelation. The revelation of Michael's identity created a charged silence in the room as Gary and Lucille absorbed the impact of those words. The initial shock gave way to a wave of raw emotion, and tears began to stream down both their faces as the reality of the moment settled in. Gary, the first to compose himself enough to speak, looked deeply into Michael's eyes, his own tears marking the lines of his aged face. Michael, my son, I have no words to express how sorry I am for everything that happened, he said with a choked voice his trembling hands extended in a gesture of supplication. We, we were desperate. We didn't know what else to do to ensure you had the care you needed. It was a decision that tore us apart, and not a day has passed without us thinking of you. Lucille, equally moved, joined in the conversation, her voice weak but needing to tell her part of the story. Michael, putting you in the orphanage broke us in ways I can't describe. It wasn't a choice made lightly, Every day since then, we've lived with the pain and regret of not being able to give you the home you deserved. She continued, explaining the financial and emotional struggles they faced, how they struggled to cope with Gary's illness, and the perpetual sadness that settled in their lives after the decision. Life was never the same for us. 
We always hoped that somehow you were being cared for better than we could offer at that time, she added, tears flowing freely. Michael listened intently, each word adding a layer of understanding to the pain and love that motivated his parents' anguishing decision. The atmosphere was charged with emotion but also with a raw and vulnerable honesty that began to build a bridge over the chasm of years of separation. Michael's tears flowed as he listened to his biological parents, Gary and Lucille, describe the feelings of anguish and regret they had carried for all those years. Each word, each confession of pain, diluted a bit of the bitterness he had felt upon discovering the truth about his past. Taking a deep breath, Michael felt moved by a greater force that propelled him towards forgiveness. I... I see now how difficult this was for you too, said Michael, his voice trembling but filled with a growing resolution. We all suffered from the circumstances, and holding on to this grudge will not heal any of us. I choose to forgive you. The words came out as a balm, healing old open wounds. Michael's response filled the room with a new wave of emotion. Gary and Lucille, deeply touched by their son's generosity of spirit, felt a mixture of relief and gratitude that left them almost speechless. Gary, with still moist eyes, slowly got up and went into the room. He returned moments later with a small piece of clothing in his hands, a carefully folded baby outfit. Michael, Gary began, his voice broken by emotion. I've kept this since the day we, since the day we had to leave you at the orphanage. He extended the baby outfit to Michael, who received it with trembling hands. I always dreamed that if by some miracle you returned to our lives, I could give this back to you. For me, it symbolized the hope of one day asking for your forgiveness, of freeing you and us from the pain of that past. Michael held the small baby outfit, its touch evoking memories he had never lived, but now felt deeply. Tears ran freely down his face, symbolizing both pain and healing. I didn't know something so small could mean so much, he said, his voice choked with emotion. Gary, watching Michael with tear-filled eyes and relief, felt an immense weight lifted from his shoulders. Knowing that you've forgiven me, that you understand, it gives me a peace I haven't felt in a long time, he replied, his voice trembling. Lucille, standing by Gary, also felt a transformation within herself. Michael's acceptance and forgiveness brought her a sense of redemption and hope. We can begin to heal now, all of us, she said, holding Gary's hand. From that moment of reconciliation, a noticeable change occurred in Gary's health. The frequent crises he had been suffering began to gradually diminish. The anguish and stress that had marked his existence for years seemed to dissipate, replaced by a feeling of serenity and gratitude for the second chance they had been given. Lucille and Gary, now relieved of the weight of guilt and uncertainty, found new joy in their lives. They began to enjoy each day more, appreciating each other's presence, and especially, the chance to rebuild a relationship with Michael. The house, which for many years had been the stage of sadness and regret, began to fill with laughter and new memories, as everyone moved forward together on a path of healing. After a day filled with emotions and revelations, Michael returned to the home of Albert and Susan, the pillars of love and stability in his life. Upon entering, he found them in the kitchen, preparing dinner together, a scene of normality and comfort that warmed his heart. With a gentle smile, Michael approached them, his eyes still a little red from the tears shed earlier. Dad, Mom, I needed to come back here and thank you, began Michael, his voice laden with gratitude and relief. Today was one of the most difficult days of my life, but also one of the most important. Without your support and advice, I don't know if I could have faced all this. Albert and Susan turned to him, a mix of concern and affection in their looks. Susan, always ready to offer a hug, opened her arms and Michael let himself be enveloped by them, feeling the love and security that always emanated from her. We're so proud of you, son. Facing the past with such courage and choosing forgiveness is something few can do, said Susan squeezing him tightly. Albert, joining in the hug, added with a firm and encouraging voice, You showed incredible strength today, son. And remember, we're always here for you, no matter what happens. Michael stepped back slightly, looking at them both with bright eyes. Thank you for adopting me, for giving me a home and so much love. 
Today, seeing everything I went through, I appreciate even more what you've done for me. You changed my life for the better, and I am eternally grateful. The conversation continued in the kitchen, amid dinner preparations and sharing of feelings. Michael's experience with his biological parents had indeed intensified his appreciation for the unconditional love and support that Albert and Susan had always offered him. That night, the family sat down to dinner together, celebrating the food on the table and the bonds that united them stronger than ever. As the family gathered around the dinner table, the atmosphere was filled with a warm serenity. Albert, looking at Michael with a gaze of admiration, could not help but express his pride. Son, I want you to know how proud we are of you, he began, passing the bread as he spoke. The way you handled the whole situation with such maturity and compassion, it shows how big your heart is. Susan, nodding in agreement, added with an affectionate smile, Yes, it's true. It's not easy to face what you've faced, and yet choose forgiveness over harboring resentment. It shows incredible strength and kindness. You have a heart of gold, son, and that makes you a rare person. Michael, hearing the words of his adoptive parents, felt a wave of emotion. Thank you. I couldn't have gotten here without your love and support. You taught me about the importance of family, forgiveness, and unconditional love. It made all the difference, he responded feeling grateful and humbled by the journey he had traveled with them. Albert, with a respectful nod, replied, We're a family, Michael, and family means being there for each other through good times and bad. Seeing you grow and become the man you are today, there's no greater pride for us. The conversation flowed naturally, and as they shared the dinner, the sense of gratitude and mutual love was palpable. Susan and Albert felt blessed to have Michael in their lives, and Michael, in turn, increasingly recognized the value of the family that chose him. After the emotional journey of reconciliation and understanding, everyone's life began to unfold with a new perspective. Albert and Susan continued to express deep pride in the man Michael had become. It wasn't just the fact that he was a dedicated doctor or a responsible individual that filled them with admiration, but how he approached life with compassion and maturity particularly in how he dealt with such profound personal challenges. Seeing you grow up and face the world with so much courage makes us feel immensely proud, son, Albert often expressed, his voice laden with affection and respect. Susan, always ready to show her support, added, You've really shown us what it means to be strong and kind at the same time. That's a true blessing. Lucille and Gary, in turn, found a new peace after the resolution with Michael. The pain and uncertainty that had marked their hearts for so many years began to dissipate, replaced by a quiet gratitude for having had the opportunity to clarify things with Michael. We've taken a big step forward, Gary often reflected. Lucille, feeling a relief she hadn't known in years, agreed. Yes, it's like we can finally breathe again, knowing that Michael understands and has forgiven us. Michael, having forgiven his biological parents, experienced a release of old emotional burdens, he felt more complete, more integrated with all parts of his story. Forgiving my parents was good not just for me, but for them too, he shared with Albert and Susan. It was liberating and helped me appreciate even more everything you two have done for me. Over time, these new dynamics solidified. Each member of this intertwined story found ways to move forward, leaning on the love and understanding they had cultivated through the challenges they faced. They lived with a renewed appreciation for family ties both those chosen and those given by nature, recognizing the complexity and beauty of the journey they shared. As the years progressed, Michael solidified his position as a respected and dedicated doctor. His career flourished, marked by an unwavering commitment to his patients and a notable skill in his field. His office was always busy and the praises of grateful patients often echoed through the hospital corridors. Dr. Michael has healing hands and an even more healing heart, some said. His medical colleagues also spared no admiration, often commenting on his diagnostic acumen and compassionate approach. He really is a role model, stated one of his closest colleagues during a medical conference. Amidst this successful professional trajectory, Michael met Amber. They encountered each other at a health seminar where she was presenting research on mental health. Amber's passion for patient well-being and her sharp intelligence caught Michael's attention. 
What began as a professional conversation soon turned into personal meetings, where they discovered many shared interests and values. Their relationship quickly evolved from friendship to romance. Amber was charmed by Michael's kindness and care, while he admired her strength and passion. It wasn't long before they decided to get married, in an intimate ceremony surrounded by friends and family. You make me want to be the best version of myself every day, Michael confessed during his vows, looking into Amber's eyes, who responded with equal tenderness. Shortly after their marriage, they received the exciting news that they were expecting their first child. The pregnancy brought a new layer of joy and anticipation to their lives. We're starting our own family, Michael. I can't wait to see you as a father, Amber said, caressing her growing belly. Michael, feeling immense happiness, replied with a radiant smile, and I can't wait to embark on this adventure with you, my love. These moments marked a period of great happiness and personal growth for Michael, who in addition to thriving in his career, was building a loving and stable family life alongside Amber. On the long-awaited day of the birth of Michael's child, the hospital was filled with joy and anticipation. Albert, Susan, Gary, and Lucille arrived full of anxiety and love, each carrying the emotional weight and joy of this significant moment. As they entered the hospital room where Amber rested, they found a scene of a complete family, united by the birth of a new life. Michael, with a smile that barely fit on his face, welcomed each one with a strong hug. Come see our little miracle, he invited them, leading them to the crib where the newborn slept peacefully. The baby, wrapped in a soft blanket, wore the small baby outfit that Gary had given to Michael years ago. The piece had been carefully preserved and now found its purpose, symbolizing continuity and forgiveness between generations. Gary, seeing the outfit on his grandson, felt a lump in his throat and tears welled up in his eyes. He approached, gently touching the baby's little hand, and said with a choked voice, I never imagined that this outfit I kept for so long would be worn by my grandson. It means more to me than you can imagine. Lucille, standing by Gary, held his hand, sharing in the emotion of the moment. Susan and Albert, watching the scene, smiled with a sense of fulfillment. Seeing our family grow like this, with so much love and forgiveness, is more than we could ask for, commented Susan, wiping away a tear. Albert added, looking at Michael and Amber, You've created something wonderful here. This baby is a blessing for all of us. On this day, the hospital room transformed into a place of healing, not just physically but emotionally, where the past of pain and separation gave way to a promise of a future full of love and union. The little baby outfit, once a symbol of a painful farewell, now marked a new beginning, weaving hope and joy into the fabric of their lives. As each one gazed at the baby, they felt grateful for the journey they had traveled together, knowing that, despite all challenges, life had given them a second chance to build something beautiful and lasting. Want access to more stories like this? Click the link in the pinned comment below and find out how.